Have you ever noticed how quickly some people will try to negate their need of repentance by implying that you're judging them? Doesn't the Bible say, judge not lest ye be judged? How many times have we heard that? In other words, what they're saying is that because they think you're judging them, that now gives them the right to do whatever they want to do, regardless of what God has already said about what they're doing. It's amazing how readily some people will quote the Bible in their own defense, while at the same time completely writing off everything else that it has to say about the way that they're living. Setting aside the fact that they're completely misunderstanding what the Bible means when it says not to judge others, the main thing they fail to realize is that the Bible says that God has appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. And He's already judged that the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. So in other words, the judgment has already been made by God. All that you're doing is lovingly telling them about this because you care about them and don't want them to face an eternity in hell. Watch as Ray risks being judged as judgmental while at the same time pointing out the righteous judgments of God. Victor, do you think you're a good person? I, I've been a good person. I've also been a bad person. I've done some really stupid things and said some bad things. and I've lied and I've hurt people. But um, God's gracious. He's, he's forgiven me for that. How do you know that? Well, it's, it says in the Bible that uh, you know, if we confess our sins, he will, he will forgive us. Have you been born again? Yes, I have. Yeah, I have, I have a relationship with, with, with God. Are you living in holiness? I, I, I try to, you know. I, uh, I still make mistakes like everybody. Are you a cross-dresser? Yes. And you're a Christian? Right. Do you think God thinks that's good? I, uh, I don't know. I've, uh, I approach him about this all the time, and, and he knows all about it. Do you read your Bible? Sure, almost every day. You do? Well, not every day. Maybe once a week. There, there are times I, I, I repeat it quite frequently. Well, do you think it's a good witness that you're dressed like a woman? If you call yourself a Christian and we're called to be without reproach and we're to live in holiness and not cause anyone to stumble, do you think it's a good witness? Paul said he won't eat meat if it causes someone else to stumble. Just personally, I, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord, but I stumble at the fact that you're dressed like a woman and you're a man. You know? Well, you know, I'm, I, I've turned out to be a transvestite. I grew up this way, I've been this way for years. I've just suddenly... What do you mean by transvestite? I enjoy cross-dressing. I've been fighting it for years, and as soon as I've accepted that as myself... Uh, Victoria, I could enjoy adultery. I could get great joy out of it, but I don't do it because it's wrong. I could enjoy theft. There's a sense of excitement with theft. So a lot of, I can enjoy pornography because I've got a wicked heart, but I don't do it because if you live after the flesh, the Bible says you'll die. You've got to, repentance has to be perpetual, it's continual. It's always yielding to God's Lordship and not your own desires. And living as a cross-dresser in our culture is offensive, and you need to think about your witness and your testimony to those that you love and to your neighbors and to other people. If you call yourself a Christian, you should be above reproach and living a life that's pleasing to God and pleasing to men as, as much as possible. Does that make sense? A lot of my friends accept me who I am. People at church accept me who I am. What church do you go to? I go to a Methodist church. Is it kind of traditional? It's, it's an accepting church. Yeah, do they, does it accept homosexuals also? We, we accept homosexuals. As they don't have to change? No. See, the Bible says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says neither will thieves and liars or adulterers and fornicators. And Victoria, what's your real name? Victor. Victor, Victor, I care about you as a person. And imagine if your eyes meet my eyes on Judgment Day and I said, look, I just accept you to that day when we talk, but I knew it was wrong. Imagine if you stand before the Lord and he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. This is your eternal salvation. I have no problem standing before the Lord as I am. This is the way I've turned out. He knows all about it. I bring this before him. I have friends who are sex homosexual who are in our church, and they are beautiful people, and there isn't any, any problem. If people choose to be that way and, and be close to God, who are we to uh, criticize them? Well, have you ever thought about this? 
that there's such a thing as idolatry where we shape a God to suit ourselves. I did it before as a Christian. I shaped a God to suit my sins. God is perfect and holy and righteous and you by no means clear the guilty. So it's important that you don't shape a God that you feel like that accepts your sins. You don't shape a God that's from your imagination. That you look at the God revealed in Scripture, the holy, perfect, and righteous God. Well, what, what is idolatry and sin to you may not be to me or to other people. That's true. And so, uh, and so I feel you're, you're being critical about people who are accepting homosexuals and, and, and uh, uh, people who, who like to cross-dress as transvestites. There are a lot of Christians I know who who are this way, they've accepted themselves this way, and, and God loves them just as much. So, Victor, if I said to you, I'm living in adultery and I'm a Christian, would that worry you? Well, adultery is, is you're, you're hurting other people. No, it's not. What's that? It's not. What's say The woman just loves it and my, my wife doesn't know. No one's getting hurt. It's all done in secret. And God loves me just the way I am. I am, and He accepts me, and I'm happy, and the church says it's okay. Would you be concerned for my salvation? I'm sure you would. Or if I was a thief, and I was stealing things, and I said, it's not hurting anybody. The people I'm stealing from don't know about it. They're stinking rich. I'm enjoying it. People accept me. Don't judge me. You'd say, hey, I'm concerned. Well, I'm taking it one further. I'm saying adulterers won't inherit the kingdom of God, neither will thieves well, are you nor homosexuals. You're about adultery. Now, now you're talking about thief. Well, both things in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, it says thieves, adulterers, fornicators, homosexuals, homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I care enough to tell you that. Check out scripture. I wouldn't lie to you. This is your eternal salvation. I, I know the scripture and how we read it and interpret it. To, to comply with our own convictions is something that a lot of people are doing that I think is just as wrong. That's true. So we shouldn't do that. We should read it as it is. Okay, and Victor. We are, we, are judged, as dude, we are judged according to what God... You can't tell me, you know, if, if I'm a thief, if I'm really hungry and I'm starving to death and I steal a loaf of bread, is God going to send me to hell? You know, no, but I, he I'm says... A thief. You say thief, all right? You don't know what the circumstances are. Every circumstance is different. You are not in a position to judge me whether I'm a thief. You are not in a position to judge me whether I'm a transvestite or, or a homosexual. I don't need to because you've told me what you are and I've just got to say what the Bible says if I'm true and faithful. But please think about what we're talking about because I don't get any joy out of telling you this. I only tell it to you because I care about you and where you spend eternity. So, Victor, thank you very much for talking to me. All right, thank you. Well, and I, I admire what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye.